21-year-old Si Jie belongs to China's post-2000s generation. This group of about 300 million youth grew up during the pandemic years and are now a key part of China's consumption engine. But there's just one problem. The young, young generation in China is spending less. And this trend started uh, in 2020 and after COVID-19. Uh, the main reason, obviously, is that uh, because uh, people got less and less money income. A sluggish post-COVID economic recovery, a property market meltdown, and a youth unemployment crisis has sent consumer confidence levels tracking downwards in the past year. The government stopped publishing official data in April. On the other hand, savings have gone up. Total household deposits were up by 12 trillion yuan in the first half of 2023, the biggest increase in a decade. It's not that they do, they do not have the money, but it's just the confidence you know, of spending that money. So young Chinese like Si Jie are getting creative about how they stretch their budget. As a graduate student, Si Jie gets a monthly allowance of 2,000 yuan from her parents. That's just over 270 US dollars. She spends the vast majority of this on food. Add clothing and shoes, as well as her passion, sports, and her budget is busted every month. She makes up for the shortfall by earning from part-time jobs, working as an office assistant and at a publishing company. She's not alone. More than 50% of Gen Z say they have side gigs to earn and save extra income. To stretch their budgets further, many are heading online. Social media in China has exploded with content like this on how to save money. Si Jie uses social media to compare prices and get recommendations before deciding whether to buy. She also makes use of super apps to buy vouchers for food and drinks, as well as secondhand books for school. In many cases, her search for cost-effective products leads her to domestic brand names. Uh,我当时是直接私信那个小红书的博主,就很有礼貌地说,啊,我说我是一名学生,但是我现在,呃,经济还没有得到彻底的解放,呃,我现在只想每个月大概预算在200到300之内,我说有没有推荐的护肤
they do not have a relatively stable wealth accumulation like their elders, and their diversified source of income also limits the actual amount of money they can spend. This could be a long-term trend where people opt for more intentional spending habits, yet still seek to purchase quality products and services within their budget. In China, you know, there's uh, what we call uh, show-off effects in the sense that when you get rich, you tend to buy a uh, top brand and uh, so uh, drive the best cars and uh, yeah, buy the best, most expensive bags, French-made bags. But uh, our next generation is not so lucky. They're going to change their consumption patterns because they don't have money. <laughs> if, let's assume that, let's say hypothetically, say five years time, China's economy will recover. I'm pretty sure that uh, this generation as well will start to show off again. For now, China's young consumers aren't just spending differently from previous generations. They're also thinking about money in a different way. I觉得节俭这个词在我们这个时代其实被赋予了很比较负面的色彩。其实我，比如说我个人，我是不希望别人说我是节俭消费的。但是，但是我觉得，嗯，如果是上一代的节俭的定义，他可能会说他知道，